this CTD is a cool piece of equipment because it basically is going to give us a profile of exactly what's happening from the top all the way to the bottom. And so it's great because it gives us lots and lots of data in a really short amount of time. It only takes probably three minutes to deploy this even in the deepest places of Lake Champlain, um, even out in the main lake where it gets to over 400 feet. Um, and you can use this in two ways. So the way that we use it here mostly is through by deploying it. So using the A-frame to deploy it down and then bringing it back up and uploading the data. You could also use this on a mooring. So you could actually stick it on the bottom of the lake and leave it there um, all, all summer. But one of the challenges is that this only gives you information for that specific spot in the lake. So if you think about when you're trying to ask big questions, you actually have to do the test either a lot of um, in a lot of different places all around the same time to get a bigger data set that helps you understand that. So we're going to look at a couple uh, graphs from our CTD here um, from last year. And I want to show you the type of information that this sen th these sensors give us. So looking at the CTD here, you can see it's kind of it's Kind of a complicated graph but the most important thing to know is that everything is relative to depth so on the left hand side i'm kind of showing you that up at the top that's the surface of the water and then as you move down that whole axis is all just depth and it brings you to the bottom of the lake and so we have color-coded lines and each of those lines is one of the sensors that we've talked about so looking at that yellow line first, we'll start there. Um, you'll see that that says par or radians, and that's actually just kind of the scientific measurement for light. So looking at how much light is entering the water column. And so from this, we can observe that at the top of the water column, there's a lot of light coming in, and then it kind of slowly drops off. And that makes sense, right? That kind of makes sense with what you would imagine um, to happen in really deep water. Um, the next line we can look at is our green line. And so our green line is actually showing us, that's the fluorescence reading. So that's showing algae in the water column, specifically phytoplankton, so the plant-like algae. Um, and this is showing us that there is kind of a, a bunch of little spikes. And so those are probably different communities um, living in the water column um, at different depths. And so depending on the type of algae, they actually have different preferences in where they like to be, and some are more buoyant than others. Um, and so that kind of is how we can explain some of those little peaks there. And then looking at our last two lines, our blue line is our level of dissolved oxygen throughout the water column. And looking at this line, you'll kind of notice that the orange line, which is temperature, is they're kind of like a mirror image of each other almost. Think of like butterfly wings. And the reason that is, is because they have a um, converse relationship. So you would expect water near the top of uh, the surface to be really warm. Think about if you've ever like, you know, jumped into the water or if you're swimming in really shallow water, it tends to be warm during the summer. And so this, that's kind of what we're seeing here. But then as the depth increases, so as we move down in our graph here, it starts to get colder. And I won't go into that too much, but nope, that's okay, Caroline, um, that's great. I won't go into it too much, but basically what's happening is that when water is colder, it's actually heavier, so it sinks to the bottom, and then water that's warmer um, kind of floats on top. And so this piece here where we see a really drastic temperature change um, is something really, really special. And so we're actually gonna kind of circle that. So this is our thermocline. And so that just shows that there's this spot where basically the temperature changes really fast. And that's really important because lakes actually create layers, um, kind of like if you think about a cake. So you'll get a layer on the top. You can kind of see where that warm water is. Um, and then you'll get this section in the middle where the temperature is changing really quickly. And then this section on the bottom. And there are special names for each of these sections, the epilimnium, metalimnium, and the hypolimnium. But what's important to know about that is that each of those sections actually can't really mix with each other. Um, so usually the top section tends to be really nutrient rich. Um, and then the bottom section tends to be really high in dissolved oxygen. So that's where a lot of cold water fish species are going to want to live um, throughout the year. And so this graph was taken on 924, so September 24th last year. 
Um, and then I wanted to show you real quick, now that you have a sense of what these look like, a graph from a little bit later. So this is 1028. So this is about a month later in Lake Champlain. And you'll notice that this looks very different. So our temperature lines and our dissolved oxygen lines are going straight down. And so what's happening in the Northeast in October? It's getting a lot colder. And so the lake actually is doing something really special at this time, it's turning over. So just to get a sense of what happens throughout the season in the lake below the surface, um, I have a little graphic I just wanna share with you that shows so thinking about in the summer, this is kind of like the first graph we looked at. Um, you get those three layers, you move into the autumn, things get a little colder and actually the water starts mixing and turning over. It kind of um, throughout the winter settles to be um, very close in temperature with a, a small deviation. And then the spring it turns over again. 